the premiere of the entire Tolkien show approaches with three episodes at once. Where's Hal, everybody, and welcome to another video. Well then, as the release of the second season of The Rings of Prime approaches, I am getting more and more requests and more and more messages from my dear followers and, and subscribers uh, asking if I will cover uh, the said show, uh, even though I have said on multiple occasions that I'm not very much excited about the prospect of uh, reviewing each and every single episode of The Rings of Power Season 2. Even though I did review the first season, I did analyses, and uh, besides that, there are multiple videos, many videos on my channel covering all things Tolkien and fantasy, since I am a fantasy aficionado. Um, and I am still debating, and uh, when I watched, or when I uh, did a little bit of research, I realized that I have quite forgotten that uh, they are going to release three episodes at once, August the 29th, 2024. So we can see on Wikipedia here, August the 29th, 2024, original release date, episodes 1, 2, and 3 from season 2. Now, do you want to annihilate me, <laughs> me people? Come on. And besides that, I can already tell you what's going to happen. I mean, they are obviously going to double down on creating their own subpar fantasy story while leeching on the famous name of Professor Tolkien. Um, just hinting here and there uh, by a name or by a factoid uh, to the appendices to the Lord of the Rings that they uh, apparently, supposedly, have the rights for. Now, we know that uh, there are characters and there are facts in season one that appeared there in that show that did not appear in the appendices to The Lord of the Rings, but elsewhere, like The Silmarillion and The Unfinished Tales, if I remember correctly, which supposedly they do not have the rights for. And then, I believe I covered it in a video like a year ago, or more than that, actually, that uh, there can be exceptions to the rule. That uh, in certain cases, when they talk to the Tolkien estate, a bunch of Judases, if you ask me, after the passing of Christopher Tolkien, that uh, they can reach to other source materials. But now, of course, we've got the other aspect that comes to the scene, and that is Warner Brothers with Peter Jackson and their desecration, their further desecration of Tolkien, because quite Honestly, the first and the last venture into Middle-earth that uh, was of uh, any worth was uh, Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Since then, everything went downhill. And that is why it's one of the main reasons why I don't like adaptations at all. Now look at what they're doing with the Ro War of the Rohirrim. Once again, they are reaching for a character that was mentioned only once in the appendices uh, in one sentence or two, not even being given a name. They are giving her the name of Hera and making an entire film about her instead of making the film about Helm Hammerhand, Freka and Wolf. And if you look here, for example, uh, the credits, uh, the cast... Um, and people that are going to portray different characters. Of course, the uh, three quarters of all the characters are names that are quite new. Uh, as far as the Tolkien lore goes, we might have seen them in the first season, like Arondir and uh, bloody uh, who else? Like uh, Arian, which is uh, Elendil's daughter, right? Of course, this is not canonical. He only had two sons. But here we've got the Dark Wizard, Kiaran Hinz, or whatever the name is pronounced, I'm sorry, I'm butchering the name, but the truth of the matter is that as far as the Istari goes, there were only five Istari in Middle-earth, and uh, they came to Middle-earth in the Third Age. Now, the Rings of Power uh, is set in the Second Age of Middle-earth, and there is a version of that story, of the Istari coming to Middle-earth in the Unfinished Tales, which says that uh, the two blue wizards might have come to Middle-earth in the Second Age. But uh, otherwise, in the Silmarillion, it is 
stated that all the wizards came to Middle-earth in the Third Age. Now, even if we looked past that, who could that Dark Wizard be? The Dark Wizard. I mean, were the, dark, were the wizards originally dark, all of them? We can't talk about Saruman, because even though, even though he was kind of a wanker, he wasn't dark from the beginning. And I think that he would uh, kind of take, as a, uh, take it as an insult if you called him the Dark Wizard, even after his fall, even after he joined Sauron. He didn't consider himself to be dark. Actually, he considered himself to be Saruman of many colors. And so, once again, it is an original character. It might be a mage of some sort. It might be a necromancer. It doesn't have to be Istari, you know. Being a wizard, I mean, doesn't necessarily mean that um, he has to be an Istari. It can be just some sort of conjurer that they made up. But once again, they are making their own things, which I would be okay, once again, I'm saying, if they made their own original fantasy show about elves and wizards. But no, no, they have to leech to the name of Tolkien, they have to take a name here and there, so that they have the feeling that they are making something close to the source material. And yes, I have been criticizing uh, all the YouTubers lately, so people might uh, say, oh, but, oh, uh, you are milking this uh, the, the same way the other YouTubers are milking, uh, like Star Wars and and um, uh, what you might call it Furiosa and things like that. Yeah, but this is a little bit of a different case, is there? Now here we are talking about a work of art written by one man and about a uh, show that is quite objectively crap, while stating that it is good and um, close to the source material. It is very easily disproved. Now I am providing you with objective and subjective criticism with, uh, you know, a, a very good criticism here. Now, if you liked Furiosa or not, that actually kind of depends on your own perception. It was very well made, it was very make, well crafted uh, as a movie standing on its own, as well as Alien Romulus, a very good film standing on its own. Whether you decide to compare it to the original Alien films is up to you. Now, as far as comic books go, for example, these are like huge franchises that have got like multiple creators over the years. So these things are completely different, those those cases. And that is why um, the prospect of watching the second season of The Rings of Power, not even mentioning three episodes at once, scares me. But I have come to the conclusion that if I have subscribers that want me to do this, that want me to review something, hmm, I might in the end kick myself to it, but it'll have to be monetized like hell. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing that for free. And even though, even though YouTube is my hobby, I've got a, a regular day job that I go to and make money, I'm not torturing myself just for the fun of it. So... I'm going to watch this, probably this cheap Chinese knockoff the, the same way this is a cheap knockoff of Master Yoda toy. I might watch this this very cheap knockoff of the Lord of the Rings <laughs> um, just for your pleasure. But it's going to be horrible. Right, so let me know in the comments down below what you think. Namarie.